Rescue, South African-based journalist Lisa Chayat filmed an interview with her grandfather, who was 88 years old at the time. The overwhelmingly positive response from family and friends led her to create life stories. In doing so, one is able to ensure that the stories of the past are preserved for future generations. Twenty years ago, my grandfather Jacob Spilkin came down from PE, as he did every Pesach, to visit. And he used to sit and tell us stories. And so I asked a friend of mine, who was a news cameraman at the time, to just sit with me and put the camera behind me and I was going to record it just for us. And it was amazing. Well, my father was a tailor. He was working for a man called Castle in Vilna. And he saw a picture of my mother and he fell in love with the picture. And then, about two years ago, a family member overseas, his daughter was doing a roots project at school, and they'd lost the DVD. So I uploaded it online and edited them down into little pieces. And I thought, hey, there's something here about recording and archiving online, and also being able to provide this for other people. So I got myself a website, put an advert in the local newspaper, and slowly but surely it started to build. And as I started to do more, I realized that there's something very powerful about talking across time. But the idea of researching online or finding a DVD amongst your parents' or grandparents' papers where someone is looking at you, at least at the beginning, and saying, my name is Lisa and I'm your great-great-great-great-grandmother or ancestor and you'll never know me, but this is who I am and this is where you come from. And in 84 they said, you had enough. 88, they said, you had enough. You're 84 years of age, but you shouldn't work anymore. I was very much against it because my, my, my brain was very active, it still is today. It is a capturing of a time when people sat around tables and spoke to each other, different to what we have now. Uh, it's a capturing of the past where the black and white photographs come alive. And someone may see it in two generations time and see a photograph that is now in the movie that may have got lost in some kist or attic somewhere and they look exactly like that person. I always say that in, in families, there's always somebody who you look like. People want to know where they come from, you know, and it's interesting to ask why. You know, to be identified perhaps makes us feel strong. Uh, it gives us meaning. I don't think this is something specific to the Jewish community. I have a lot of non-Jewish clients who love the idea of it. But coming from the Jewish community, I know what it is sitting around the table after Shabbos and reminiscing and thinking and looking at who died in the Shoah and, and, and looking back at uh, Lithuania or Latvia or wherever it might have been, the Haim and who was there. Because people died and because it's a very defined immigrant community, there was a lot of discussion around it. But I think we're lucky as Jews that we come from a culture and a heritage that prizes heritage. I'd be very busy if I was, if I was 80. <laughs> yeah. But it's not nice to grow old, but still I, I've got a lot to be thankful for. Often the first response is me, I'm not important. What, what, what did I do in my life? It's not about that, it's about the fact that they have had a life and it has great value to the family. But when we sit and say to them, this is an opportunity for you to tell us about your parents and your grandparents, and you're the key to those stories. And I don't say it, but the truth is, is that when they're not there anymore, and they may be in their 70s, 80s, 90s, those stories are gone, they get very excited and very proactive and wanting to share that because then they're really partnering in passing the stories over. And then once we get going, it's fantastic. People love to talk about growing up, and especially if it's different to how they were now, and they love to talk about their kids. We've interviewed a woman who's 102, who tells us, you know, that uh, her biggest tip to us is that we shouldn't buy on credit. <laughs> and never bought on credit. I'm proud of it. Hey, hey, that's why the world is in trouble. So I was bought on credit. I that's from an old lady of a hundred years old. <laughs> Lisa Chayat's Life Stories project allows one to literally talk across time and speak directly to one's children and children's children.
It also allows future generations the opportunity to hear from someone they might never meet, reminding them where they come from and gifting them with a tangible and priceless link to their ancestry. Where and when were you born? 1914. Where? I was born in Lithuania. When I got a call from Myrna to say I'd like to do the life story, come and meet my mom, she's amazing, I thought, great, this is another project we can do and I wanted to do it. But when I met Ida, I mean, it takes two minutes and you completely fall in love with her. My mom had a wonderful philosophy of life. She was very positive and she loved life, she loved people. And when she was getting to 97, I decided that I'd like to capture her uh, ideas, her spirit, and just her love of life and her anecdotes for the grandchildren, the great-grandchildren and future generations. Because I just felt that she was a very special woman. Who would have thought that I get this wonderful story of my life? at the age of 96. I'm so enjoying it. I'm hearing myself talk for the change. <laughs> she, she was born with happy genes and she also described a fascinating time of being a shop owner in District 6. My shop was called London Drapers. So much so that the customers used to call me Mrs. London. The hello street was the shopping center of Cape Town. I was very successful because I was very, very well known there. They loved you. They loved me. She told us about all the stories from Lithuania from the time she was a child. She was born in 1914 and she came in 27 to South Africa. She left there when she was 13. And we always found it interesting. We always wanted to hear those stories over and over. And I thought if we want to hear them, I'm sure that the next generation would want to hear them and the generation after that. That was the time when we were in Russia and there was a terrible famine. My father went through many, many places and he couldn't find a bottle to feed the baby. With that, the ba baby died. What was the baby's name? You who just... You know, life is life. There's joy in all stories and there's tragedy often in many stories and in, in, in many of the interviews that I've done with Jewish community members, there's a time when we talk about Holocaust and we talk about what was lost. We talk about coming on the boat over to South Africa and not seeing anybody and then those moments. And I'm wanting, and I'm sure that my clients are wanting, for people to have the full scope of that. Of course, we spend a lot of time in the research phase, and I say, look, you know, where do you want me to go and where don't you want me to go? It's not an investigative documentary of someone's life. It's a spoken autobiography as told by them in the way that they want to tell it. And sometimes they do want to talk about the tragedy because they think it's important. They might have lost a son or a daughter or the loss of a spouse. And sometimes they say, I'd rather just do it in a, in a short way, and that's fine. So it's in their telling. And sometimes they tell their version of the story and the son or daughter is at the back there saying, no, that's not the way it happened. But it's their moment. The biggest lesson I think that I learned from her is not to hold a grudge, not to be annoyed with someone, to just forget about it, you know, and move on. She used to always say they're not as clever as me. That I think was a wonderful trait of hers. I think that you've got to be loving and you've got to love people. You've got to be honest. You've got to be happy with yourself. But it was, it was a life of loving, not hate. There's no hate in me. I love you and I love you. I think it's the most wonderful thing that I've done in my whole life because I can just put it on and it's as though my mom is sitting in the lounge with me. It's like she's here with me. And I'm really happy that I've got it. Everybody has a story. We all have something that has value because we're around. 
and it has enormous value for f future generations who see you talking and never expect it and meet you and know that you are where they come from. And when I look at my granddad and know that I made the effort for him, because that's personal for me, I just say that's so cool that we did it. When I've mentioned this to people, they've all said, oh, what a pity I never did it for my dad. What a pity I never did it for my mom. You know, and I just feel that one shouldn't say what a pity. You should just do it. Thank you, Ida. Thank you. For one who didn't come to talk, I said to Merla, Merla, I'm not talking because I may say the wrong things. She says, talk, talk. For one who didn't come to talk, I spoke for three hours. A record.